It's now the next morning and the planner is still going. <laughs> it's good. Someone is doing do-it-yourself stuff. So do we. Guys, welcome back to the off grid garage in not so sunny Australia, but it's good for me. I've got 1.4 kilowatt from my garage here, 27% state of charge, and we've got 24 amps outside. It's not too bad for winter, but the next week forecast is pure sunshine, warm days, cold nights. So this is our very typical winter weather. I know a lot of people are jealous about this winter weather because it is perfect for solar. And I know that because I lived in the European winter for over 40 years. It's usually dark, gray, rainy, snowy, and there's not much solar gain at all. But here it is the total opposite. We just have to fight the shading. So, um, we have finished the cabling yesterday. All the cables are coming here to the pool area. So, and the next step would be to move the inverter now from behind this panel there, from the grass area, and we will hang it over here. And um, when I say hang it, I, I mean it. I prepared these two um, hooks here, these metal hooks, and I am just going to hang this inverter here in the fence. Because I said this yesterday already, I thought about making a plate or something where the inverter sits on. But I also want maximum cooling for it. And mounting it here on the other side of the fence is ideal because, because it gets the best air cooling here ever. And I probably just... No, it needs to be further this way, otherwise I can't access the MC4 connectors anymore. So, okay, let's do it here. Okay, all right. That seems to work fine. I'll put some, um, I'll put some of the sticky rubber underneath here so it doesn't, doesn't bang on the fence if it's windy. But apart from that, what, what, what should happen? I mean, I will also close the loop here of this wire so it can't be lifted up anymore. And then here at the front, we can bend this one against the fence a bit. So really, if someone bumps it, it's just the first initial test. Seems to be fine. We've got enough access here, access there. This is our outgoing power cable and the extension here for another inverter. So, and then our conduit is coming this way, all the way across here. So I need to come down a bit. Okay, I'll figure this out. So I have now plugged in the um, inverter again and also connected our roof panel here connected this to PV4 because um, this will be our PV4. Even the website still says zero watts and we have no AC load. Even the pool pump is running, which is about 340 watts or something. So this is what this one panel delivers at the moment. And we can also see the status LED there is flashing blue, which means it's connected, it's up and running. It's all good. I think it likes it here. Okay, so we need this cable where the positive has been cut off. This is our panel number two. It's one, two, three, four. So this is panel number one. Now this is panel number two. Shit, Andy, come on, concentrate. This is the one with nothing. This is our panel number four. Okay, these two will be brothers. So this goes up here, this comes, oh, I think it's a bit too long here, what I've done. Nah, it should be fine. So two over this side. And then we have it here. So this um, conduit comes in this height, which is too high for our inverter. So I have to jump down a bit, with I, which I do with this flexible conduit yeah now we come here we've got two cables going this side and the other here here we've got two cables going on the other side of the inverter and the earth and the earth is going and the earth and the earth is going straight to the switchboard this is what the sparky can take care of when he comes next week to connect all the power things there so so that's that's how it looks like then yeah. I'm not sure how to support this one here. We just put a piece of timber, a short positive and nothing. 
ultra positive and this is nothing this is wrong because here at the back it is short negative and this one has two cut corners so I need the short negative or the cut corners in there I knew I did it wrong I knew <laughs> so hard to remember when you watch it here on the roof and go all the way back to the pool area and then I've forgotten. So I've now pulled the um, conduit behind the post and now it's flush with the fence and I could use some stainless steel cable ties here to really tighten this and I think this is good as it gets. I don't think I need to do anything else here. That's just fine. Well I still need the saddles here. So yeah, I guess um, get some MC4 connectors and we can connect this first panel and use the new cabling if I haven't mixed it up. I, um, I haven't glued any of the other connections yet because I wasn't quite sure how the whole mechanic with the um, conduit fits but here this will be the final connection anyway so the corrugated conduit will go up here and then we connect both panels up here but I have to take all these connections apart a bit again put some glue on it and then put them all together so they are a watertight and b mechanical connected as well and I know I made a big mistake here I've got the um, I've got the writing on the top. <laughs> so I'm cutting off the conduit over here somewhere. Got our earth cable, which needs to be connected to the rail. And then we've got one cable going this way. And the other one stays over here for the next. And then I put some silicon around this um, hole here to seal it up. Because this is obviously exactly where the gap is in between the panels. And if it rains, well, there's moisture coming in. And also ants. Ants using these conduits as a six lane highway. Both ways. <laughs> yeah, and I probably um depending how long these cables are but they should be long enough to get me them in the corner here so i want to have my disconnection points here and here in the other panel so right in the middle so i can easily go on the roof here and disconnect the panels if i need to for troubleshooting purposes for whatever reason i haven't got any of these stainless steel clips yet to fix the cables here at the frame later So, um, so something like this, so then I've got my disconnection point here in the corner, maybe over there somewhere. So I need two clips here, which I haven't. So and here comes the big challenge again, crimping MC4 connectors, male, female, I hate it. I hate this system, it's not good. So obviously this is our positive cable coming from the solar panel, which is a male. Obviously going into a female connector but the female connector has a male pin yeah makes sense right because the male connector coming from the solar panel has a female connector inside and only the male fits in there but it goes into a female uh, do you see how confusing this is unbelievable how bad is that <laughs> I'm always complaining about this when I do them always it is terrible it's a terrible system uh, Male connector, female plug, and this is my positive. It has a red stripe, yes. Okay, and then the female contact. No, hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the negative coming from the solar panel. It has a male contact inside. And this is the female counterpart, which goes into a male plug. <laughs> oh God, forget it. Jeez. <laughs> 
tighten them as good as possible. Ah, yeah, some people have complained the last time when the electrician was here and did the installation on top of the garage and said, well, the MC4 connectors are not tightened enough. But look at these ones here coming with the solar panels. Sometimes you cannot, you cannot tighten them any more than this. This is fully tightened, yeah? There's not much you can do anymore. Sometimes you can. So it's not like this one is not tight enough. It has nothing to do with it. So we, before we connect the panel, we check the polarity again. Just um, peace of mind. This is our positive and we have 48 volt. Polarity is correct. So at the moment we are discharging with around uh, 200 watts. Okay, then let's plug them in. And the positive down here. And now we should see. All right, and now we can already see the multipliers is doing less work because we are pushing more energy into the grid, to our micro grid, 108 watts only. First one connected and working. Yeah, it is, it is a bit of a cloudy situation this afternoon. Which is good. Look at this, 1700 watts still. At 40% from uh, 2021 or 22 this morning. So that's incredible. <laughs> uh, I made a bit of a, I wouldn't say a mistake, but it's a bit of a variation. <laughs> um, the cables are a bit short here coming out for the front row. And I don't think they are long enough to pull them into the corner of the panel when it hangs over. So it seems to be a bit short. Even the, the earth cable is just long enough to connect it to the rail here. I don't know what happened there, but it's oh geez, this guy is still somewhere down there with a planner. This is like since this morning, since we just started nine o'clock. This is for three hours, and yesterday already three or four hours. What is he doing? Is he planning his whole house? Well, anyway, all MC4s are connected over here as well, and in the pool area, all the cables are terminated with MC4 connectors now. So the last step would be to get the panels up here, put them on our tilt system, clamp them down and then connect them. There's not much solar coming anyway here. I mean, it's good for my garage. It's still two and a half kilowatt, but here in this area, hmm, yeah, it's getting darker and darker. It's good. Okay, so let's... Can you smell it? It's like, it's like uh, freshly baked German waffles. Oh, guys, um, I'll be back after a short break. <sighs> I could eat only five of these waffles. <laughs> They are making you full oh, and tired. Okay, guys, we are as ready as it gets to put um, these panels here on top of the house now. Just waiting for my wife to come out to give me a hand with these panels. No, 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 and ND2 is not coming today. It's, no, it's a total pain in the ass to edit this video when he is coming over. So, no, it's not going to happen today. Okay, this was fairly easy, but exhausting. Whew. I tell you what, aligning two panels on a tilt system just by yourself, this takes a while. That took me like now 15 minutes to get them aligned and perfectly here. But I think I've got a good idea now how it works. You have to start from the bottom because this rail is fixed and doesn't move while the other one is still a bit flexing. Once you got the bottom aligned and fixed, it's not as hard anymore. Okay, two more to go. And the sun is almost 45 minutes daylight. I have to hurry up. <laughs> ah, bomb and fest. Okay, guys, oh, wow, this 
went actually a lot faster than the first one. <laughs> I'm getting good with that. So we've got some, uh, some more space here. <laughs> I could easily fit another three rows at least. Nah, maybe later, maybe. Okay, so this is how it looks like now. Yeah, we have to wait for the next sunny day, which will be tomorrow. And then we have a look at the shading situation then from this angle all the way down to there. And when it starts shading the other row. Okay guys, without further to do, let's uh, connect these babies. Yeah, this is really a bit short here. I don't know, what, what did I think here? Why are they so short? Jeez. Okay, so we can now disconnect all our extension cables. I told you they are only temporary until today. I'll do a last quick check for polarity and voltage for each of the panels before we plug them in. 44.1, 43.9, it's getting dark quickly. All right, I'm not sure if we still see any output, but we can try. So if we still get power from these panels, which I doubt, we should see AC going down. And the last one, can we see already something? Oh yeah, 37. There's another one, two watts <laughs> coming from these panels now. All right, they're all in. It may take a moment to, um, for the MPPTs to sort this out. Yeah, I'll sort this out later. 37, 39, one minute, zero watts. Oh wow, okay, that's depressing. Okay guys, we have officially moved all the solar panels now on top of the house roof. Man, that looks... <laughs> they are huge! Yeah, this was pretty much my weekend here down in sunny hot Australia. And I will have an ice cold spat now, so thank you very much for all your donations. Maybe I give one to my wife as well because she has helped a bit. Okay, so far we are functional, working again. All four voltages are showing up in this uh, in the um, microinverter. So all panels are connected. I hope I haven't mixed anything up because I want them in a certain certain order. So I can actually see how much power, how much energy they are generating over time. And especially during different seasons and during different shading situations then. But we have to wait for another sunny day to find out. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel, for all your emails and all your comments and sharing and liking. And of course, for all your donations, as I said before, thank you very much to all these beautiful people who are donating. And until the next video, guys, when we do something completely different, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.